Hey everybody, it's Party Lead. Welcome you back to Desperados 3. Call it a let's play, call it a walkthrough, whatever you'll call it. Troublemakers in Flagstone is going to be a very fun level to tackle because it's the first one that's really open-ended and there are some really cheeky solutions that I've come up with. One that I actually only discovered just earlier today that I'm really excited to share because I think it's a very, you know, out of left field kind of solution. Um, just want to mention if you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to see them continue, if they're helping you solve problems or discover new opportunities if you're playing the game or if you're looking forward to playing the game, then uh, let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. If you just want to watch more and you have no interest in buying the game, still let me know down below. And if you have your own solutions, share them in the comments too, folks. I love this kind of stuff. Anyway, so what we're going to try and do today is playing on Desperado difficulty. We're going to try and accomplish all of the badges you see over here. Uh, don't touch any bushes or haystacks. I thought I accomplished last time, but I'm going to try and accomplish that today, and well, that'll be a new badge we can try and earn together, and kill three mission targets at the same time, as well as the speed run over here. Those two I simply won't be attempting because they're both timing-based, and when you're doing commentary, it's hard to hit the timings because, you know, I'm going to be trying to explain things and whatnot, but I will tell you how I think kill three mission targets at the same time is possible. It's a tough one to pull off, uh, and I might try to pull it off separately later, but, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 this can all, all the green highlighted ones can be done in one playthrough, and that's what we're going to try and do today. So let's not waste any more time, folks. Again, John Cooper has come to Flagstone to meet an old friend. It doesn't take long for trouble to arrive. Nestled between the peaks of the Colorado Rockies lies the small town of Flagstone. Store owners, farmers, blacksmiths, and barkeeps all go about their daily business. Workers of the DeWitt Company mingle with the locals as they continue to build the new railroad through town. As Cooper arrives in Flagstone, he heads straight for the saloon, which is empty except for a few regulars. The barmaid pours him a glass of whiskey, and he nurses it while he waits for an old friend to arrive. They tore down old William's house the other day. Now, why do they have to do that? Can't they lay their tracks between our homes? Aw, oh, stick to the game, will you? I'm just saying. If they ever come to my house, I'll show these railroad thugs who's balls. Oh, shit. Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Oh, we'll get to you in a minute. You know the drill. Everybody out. Y yes, sir. <laughs> Look at them run. Something in your ears. Just finishing my drink. Listen, asshole. We own this town now. So when he says out... We don't like troublemakers around here. <laughs> Who do we have here? Well, you got double trouble now. What the hell? You again? <gasps> <laughs> They're running away like dogs. I can't blame them. Poor guys had to look at your ugly mug. Oh, you're welcome. You need a drink, so do I. Hector, yours is on the house. Gracias, senorita. They come back, you just call me. You really shouldn't. We'll kill you next time. <laughs> they can try. I guess you've been here a while. Spent your time pissing off the wrong people, huh? I'm the one they pissed off. <laughs> but as you're here, maybe we can work together. Oh, no, you are not dragging me into this. I'm here for Frank. Surround the place! Don't let them get away! Amigo, you're already in it. And besides, you owe me one. All right, let's get out of here. Come on, out the back. They're here somewhere, and we got all the time in the world. Well, these guys are out for blood. Who the hell are they? Uh, part of the DeWitt Company. I have scores to settle with a few of them. <laughs> all right, fine. But I hope you've got a plan. Uh, sure. Let's head for the street. Nobody will bother us if we stay among the townsfolk, so we got room to breathe. 
I mean, so far, so good. But, um, whose heads are we bashing in? First, we got Jarvis here. Real tough guy. Right now, he's in that backyard trying to ride the town bull. Next is Wild March. She's on the first floor of the Flagstone Brothel, drinking whiskey and watching the girls dance. Then there's the Duke. He's making rounds with his bootlickers up and down Church Street. And last is the foreman, McBain. He's a real asshole. Had his men tear down half the town so that he doesn't have to plan around it. So we get rid of them, head back to the saloon, and finish our drinks. That ain't much of a plan, Hector. Why do you think I've waited for you? All right, let's get it over with. Any plan that ends with finishing off drinks sounds like a good plan to me, but that's besides the point. So, we are introduced to Hector, the trapper, and he's got a giant bear trap named Bianca that can be used to trap enemies, by which I mean kill them. You'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. Uh, you can either put that in someone's pre-existing path, or you can use his whistle ability to draw people to a certain location. He's also got the axe that he uses as a melee weapon. And for those of you asking about the uh, pacifist opportunities, you are able to swap every character's melee weapon out for fisticuffs. And uh, that allows you to knock people out and tie them up rather than kill them, if that's what you're going for. We're not. We also have the good stuff over here, which is a flask that Hector can use to heal himself. Uh, and an important thing to note is that long coats do not get trapped by Bianca. They spot her and they disarm her. And another thing to note is that Hector is the only person who can solo long coats. They're a bit of a challenge to take on otherwise. We'll touch on that when it becomes relevant. Now, here we have the long coat scanning this area, the gunman who patrols back and forth sitting on his barrel and talking to the long coat, and this gunman scanning this area. You'll notice as soon as this guy sits down that there is a bit of a blind spot over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to send Hector up and over. I'm going to go ahead and put Bianca down right in that corner over there. Then we're going to get our eyes. Let's lure someone into your embrace. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get our eyes on this gunman, though. I'm going to go ahead and whistle. I'm going to make our way out. Let's go. Hurry it up. Go ahead and get behind this building over here. Hell, I'm getting... Would hate to be that guy. See? The old girl hasn't let me down yet. And we're going to let that happen. <laughs> so now Hector's going to move on up. We're going to go ahead and pick Bianca back up. Stay clear of the bushes. I really would hate to miss out on that badge because of a misclick. And Cooper, in the meanwhile, is going to creep past where we can crawl and get through. Hector's good to move now as well, so let's go ahead and do the same. And what I like to do over here is pull Cooper to that little corner. It's a nice blind spot. Get Hector up to here. And pop the whistle. You'll notice the long coat has a big blind spot over here. So we're just going to wait for Buddy to enter that blind spot, and we're going to rush him. See you later. Problem solved. Now this next spot over here, Hector will make it very clear what we need to do. Remember, leave the big guy to me. He got you once already. He's all yours. There you have it. Yeah, it makes it very clear. So Hector is going to go in and pull off what is probably one of my favorite animations in the game. We've got a massive blind spot over here, so let's dive on in and enjoy it. <laughs> Not your lucky day, is it? Honestly, one of my favorite animations. Honestly, one of my favorite animations. All right, let's go ahead and move on up over here. Uh, so we've cleared this area out. We're now about to enter a safe zone where even if we get spotted, it's not a problem. But if we get spotted crossing the threshold, it looks like it might be an issue. Uh, we have to be very careful. The door is over here. You'll see that red highlight that lets us know it's the threshold. We've got this gunman. We've got Chester Goodwill. And we've got this gunman looking at the area. So we want to stay low. We want to wait for Buddy to look away. And we're going to just move through. We're out. Relax. So who's first on your list? How about we just kill them in the order we like? Great plan you have there. Keep a lid on it. I love their banter. Now, Chester always spots the exit. But he's never drawn the alarm or pulled the alarm. So I think that's just nature of the beast. Uh, now, the first thing we're going to do is actually... 
I think let's go ahead and listen in on these conversations. Let's get all that out of the way and then we can quick save and do a bunch more of the more dangerous stuff. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to... All right, here's what we'll do. We'll listen to all the conversations except for this one. And I'll leave a timestamp in the description down below to the last... Well, here's the thing. It's a little strange for me to tackle this and, and help you guys kind of skip it if you're not interested. Because there is a conversation that happens periodically, and I want to make sure you don't miss that. Here's what we'll do. We'll just... Here, here's what we'll do. There. It's that easy. Just fast forward time a little bit. You see this guy with a white cap? White hat, I guess? He goes to the brothel over here, and he marches his way down to have a conversation with this woman over here. You want to make sure you catch that, which is what I wanted to highlight before I gave you a timestamp to, to skip on ahead. So let's go ahead and move down to here and make sure we beat him to the conversation so we can hear it. Yeah, sure, but I, I don't know how all this is going to play out. Yeah. You know that man who came with the workers? He's up at the mayor's now, right? Oh, now that one's got eyes like there's no life in him. Looked straight at me when he rode past. Oh, shit myself. Oh, curse the mayor that he brought these people here. You got that right. Yeah, how about Betty, huh? Is it true she got ill? Is it? All right, so that's more of a story beat conversation. It's not about this level specifically, but it kind of fleshes the world out. So as I quick save, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that because it's less obvious. Um, the other conversations, for the most part, are these question marks. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, we just had number nine, so number ten is still a mysterious one. If you want to skip past these obvious conversations, minus this one, I'll have a timestamp in the description down below, but we're now just going to tackle these conversations, again, minus this one. And the 10th one, I'll leave for later because it is a mysterious one. I want to make sure everyone's able to see how it's done. So let's go ahead and tackle some of these conversations, starting with this one, which is actually relevant to the uh, Jarvis situation over here. So let's head on down. Okay. Let's go. Shit, that's been going on all day. I'd say he's going to torment the poor animal to death. <laughs> Unless he gets trampled first. That dumb bowl is like a box of dynamite. Remember when we got it from your cousin and my boy threw pebbles at it? Bad fucking day. All right, so the game makes it very obvious that you've received a new hint. Angering the ox will be very unhealthy for anyone nearby. Great, but actually listening in on the conversation makes a difference because the guy mentioned throwing pebbles at the bull, or ox, I guess, seems to trigger it. Now, we don't have pebbles, but we have something that's very pebble-like that we can throw instead. So again, you, you do get some, you know, insight. Um, if you're unfamiliar with some of the potential solutions. So that's one done. Let's go ahead and have this conversation over here next. You heard what happened with the church bell the other day? Yeah. Just imagine if it fell down on Sunday with half the town standing under these. I don't even want to think about that. Interesting. So there's a church bell, evidently, that fell down recently. And if it were to fall down again, look at that danger zone. I wonder if we can use that somehow. The answer is yes, and we absolutely will be using that somehow. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and continue down this way, listening on this conversation over here. Oh, yes, you made it. But they never told anyone they tore it down. Those poor people. Yeah, ask me, the railroad's a good thing. They want us all gone, huh? Can't you see that? These tracks right past my shop, the way I see it. This is real good for business. Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right, so a little bit of insight into the divisive nature of the railroad. And let's go ahead and have this conversation down over here. Now, this one's easy to miss because it's nowhere near where you have to go to accomplish the mission. Um, so this one's easy to miss. It's all the way at the bottom corner over here. So let's dive on in and listen in on this one. I'm here all kinds of things lately. What about you? You know that Mayor Higgins is going to marry Miss Kate tomorrow? Yes, that poor girl. The man is a pig. Bet she's after his money. Don't say that. All right, a little bit of insight on the story and this woman named Kate. I don't know who she might be, though. Again, series fans will recognize the name potentially, but, I mean, Kate's such a common name, right? All right, let's head back with Cooper over here, and let's actually put Cooper here where I'll need him next. And let's get Hector taking care of the other conversation. So Hector can listen in on this one over here. I thought all this would be good for the town. 
We were so, so happy when the mayor told us that the railroad would come. And now? It's the guy running the company. Yeah, he wants to see us gone. Doesn't give a doesn't give a shit about us. Yeah. And did you hear what they did to old William? Right, a bit more about uh, the story of the situation, I suppose. Let's keep moving over here up to this one. I'll be there in time. This is outrageous. You can't just tear down my house. Company orders. Tracks gotta go through here. The hell with your company. That's another one taken care of. And you'll notice as we take care of these conversations, the question marks turn to check marks, just so you don't double back and, and, and check on another one or an old one uh, a, a second time. Go ahead and pull back. And I actually want to listen in on these guys as well. No rush, amigo. You say we're building something proper in this back wall. That's how it's done. Yes, exactly, sir. You are absolutely right, sir. That's just more because... I like the insight it gives you about uh, how, how these guys think about, or what these guys think about the railroad. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on up to this question mark over here, listening on this conversation. Another story-related one. You'd think you'd be more careful with that kind of money. I'll tell you, Mary Higgins is spending a fortune on his wedding. Almost bought up my entire shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been after Kay for years. Probably had this all planned out in case you finally said yes. <laughs> ha! Just like with Suzanne. Remember when that prospector tried to marry her? Oh, yeah. All right, so, uh... Oh, I'm surprised it's given us this whiskey hint. Oh, I see why. Well, I'll save that for later. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's another story beat that we've got over here. Now, that's all the conversations we're going to tackle for now. Go ahead and quick save it. And now we're going to, again, those of you who clicked on the timestamp, welcome back. We're going to tackle this one later when it's time to deal with Wild Marge because it's relevant. Uh, but let's go ahead and push on down here with Hector. And Cooper, we're going to pull you up to here. We're going to crouch. Here's the deal. Dealing with Jarvis is difficult. Well, difficult's a strong word, but it's complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. We've got Jarvis, who goes back and forth from the bull up to this spot to have a conversation with his gunman. We've got this guy that patrols up from there down to this poncho over here. We've got uh, this guy over here, who stands around over here, but occasionally goes up to that corner to take a leak. And we've got this guy watching over this entire zone. And we've got this guy watching over this entire zone. There are a couple of blind spots that you might be able to see, especially one in the corner up over here that, apart from a split second uh, where this gunman can see it, no one can see. There's also this alternative entry point, but I prefer the one I'm about to show you, otherwise I wouldn't be showing it to you. But you can go through this way if you prefer, and there's an entry point over here as well. Uh, that is entirely, of course, your prerogative. But the first thing we need to do is take care of this poncho up here. And you wait until this gunman's looking away, and you wait until this gunman is looking away, and you're going to ensure that Jarvis isn't looking at you either, because he will spot you, and you rush up. Jarvis a backyard corral. Jarvis and his men hang around here. Bet he's having a go at the bull again. Then we better keep our heads down once we're in. Yep, and then once this guy's looking away, and once Jarvis is in this conversation, you can move in, and you can stab this poncho. Important to remember, when you're stabbing someone on a rooftop, you stand. And you can get spotted while you stand. Looks like Jarvis here has been working that bull all day. <laughs> if that bull gets angry, we're in for a show. Like that one time in El Paso. Or like every time in El Paso. Alright, now if we weren't having that conversation, I would have leapt in. But we were, and I didn't want to interrupt it, which is maybe, you know, foolish me. But you have an opportunity to stab this gunman from up top of the rooftop when he's over there taking a leak. And you'll notice this gunman over here, there is that blind spot right next to that little post over there, uh, which is very important to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and fast forward time. Just hold down X to make time go ahead a little bit faster. And this gunman as well cannot see up there either. So we're just waiting for Buddy here to come up over here while his friend is down over here. A very important combination, right? Things don't happen in isolation here. You also want to make sure Jarvis isn't able to see things up there. So we wait, we quick save, just to play it safe, and we dive down. We pick up the body, and we tuck into this corner over here. I'm just kidding. Sorry about that. I hit the Windows key by mistake. <laughs> That's my bad. Uh, he's going to spot us. He's going to spot us because we need to be in that corner. I was uh, 
the window key accident was because I was reaching for the control. I'm playing on my laptop, which is unfamiliar ground for me, <laughs> so I apologize. So let's go ahead, dive on in. I'm gonna pick him up. I'm gonna get into that corner and drop down. Uh, we were quick enough to react so he didn't draw the alarm, so you have to be really quick with that. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and move Hector right up to the edge over here. We're unfortunately not able to whistle and draw the attention over here, so we're gonna wait until the gunman leaves. And here's what we're gonna do. Wait until he leaves. We're gonna quick save. We're gonna push in. A whistle. And we're gonna leave. And then, Hooper's at the ready. Cool. Down goes our friend here. Now we wait. We wait. Pick him up. We head up into the corner again. We drop him off. We go up the ladder here. Stay tucked in this corner. And we quick save. Paranoid quick saving is a part of the game. Just how we roll. Alright, now here I was a little slow, I think, which is unfortunate. Though I could do this a little differently. I should be able to pull this off a little differently. It's part of the fun is the evolving nature of the game. So let's quick save again, just in case it doesn't work out. But we should be able to, yep, dive down over here and take care of Buddy. Make sure we're not spotted over there. Ensure he's stuck in that conversation first. Wait till he turns around. Dive down over here. Slaughter him over here. Behind that blind spot. You want to make sure you're using your blind spots properly. Um, and yeah, we're good to move now. Go on up ahead. Get the coin toss. Sure, knock yourself down. Let's get going. Looks like Jarvis wasn't such a big shot after all. One down, three to go. Oh, the things you drag me into. We've been through worse. All right, nice and easy. So, uh, a bit of a bit of a kerfuffle over here with the uh, the body being spotted. But again, an easy thing to solve. Just don't hit the wrong key. Pick up the body when you want to pick it up. But you want to make sure that you're tucking them behind the post over here, because otherwise they'll get spotted and it will be a problem. Now, what you can do is you can actually hide this body as well if you so choose. It's not a terrible idea because when they go around wondering about the accident they can come upon it but um you see they didn't it's entirely your prerogative every time i've done it it hasn't happened so i haven't uh shown the body being hidden because i found it to be unnecessary but if you want to feel better safe than sorry kind of a thing then you know that's uh, that's entirely up to you now we're going to tackle the rest of them <laughs> of course that's the mission marge and um the duke and McBain, they are the three that I think can be taken care of at the same time to obtain that badge. Just as a reminder, there is the badge available to kill three mission targets at the same time. Um, and I think these are the three that you can kill at the same time. I'm going to show you how to kill them each individually, and then we'll talk about how you can synchronize the killing to make sure uh, you get that badge. I think it's uh, it's obviously impossible for me to do it because of the commentary slowing me down and stuff, but I think it is possible to pull it off over there. Uh, so let's go ahead and go for it, shall we? So first of all, we're going to tackle Wild March. Let's listen in on this conversation because, again, it's relevant. Let's move on up to here. Looks like the place is closed. The whorehouse. Townsville can't go in since Wild March took over. Not the front door, then. All right. Keep it low. Let's find another way in. Keep a lid on it. She's making me crazy. Part of me just wants to pack up and leave. I went through her draw yesterday. Did you know she keeps lodging them there? <gasps> Don't tell me you got a taste for that stuff. Oh, of course not. I just wondered who we got this from. You know, Doc Harold, sometimes when he can't pay, he brings a bottle from his stash. No. Really? <laughs> All right, so, turns out, there's laudanum in the area. A bottle of laudanum in the brothel, very lethal in high doses. So, we know that there's laudanum here, and we know that there's whiskey here, and if we observe the movements of this civilian, we'll see that she goes down, gets whiskey from here, and then delivers it to Wild Marge. So we need to taint that whiskey. Uh, so we need to get the laudanum first. Now, how do we get to the laudanum? There's a couple of ways. This is my preferred way of doing it. So first of all, again, quick save. Hopefully we don't have to use it, but just in case. There are unpredictable elements in this game, obviously. We're going to wait until Buddy here turns around to look up. We want to make sure he doesn't get too close to his other friend. 
But as soon as he gets up there, looks up there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw our knife. Down he goes. Want to make sure you don't get spotted by civilians either because they will trigger the alarm. So we can go in, stay low, pick up the knife, drop this guy as well. Beautiful. Now Hector can come through. We do not have to get rid of his bodies. Now the last time I tried to get the uh, no bushes or um, haystacks, I was hiding bodies and I wonder if that's what prevented me from getting it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. So next up is this situation. It's a bit of a hot mess. There's a lot of patrolling going on. We've got this gunman over here who has a conversation with this guy over here and then loops up and has a conversation with this guy. We've got this gunman over here who pulls back, guards the door that gives us access to the whiskey and comes up over here and looks up this way. We've got this guy looking around this way. And we got these guys kind of just looking over this way. If you wanted to use the other point of entry, it's important to note, but you know, doesn't matter to us, I guess. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get... I want to figure out the safest way to execute this. Let's quick save it again, just so we can pull back to it if necessary. We're going to move up this way, stay away from these bushes, trying our best here. We're going to put Bianca down over here, because this shed provides a bit of a blind spot. And we're going to whistle. Uh, we're going to whistle as soon as that guy turns around, he's about to leave, because that buys us a bit more time. And then we're going to try and skirt around these bushes again. And get out of here. There we go. There we go, get behind the blind spot here. But he's gonna come through and... Down he goes. Always trust in Bianca, indeed. All right, let's go ahead and quick save that. So we're still in the clear, no bushes touched or anything. Stay that way. Uh, now Cooper can probably stay back here actually, but let's go ahead and move him up too. Let's go ahead and move him up too. I wanna get over to here. And this part is uh, very much, I would say, Hector's show right now. Let's stay behind this blind spot. Let's go ahead and pick up Bianca. And here's what we need to do. We need to wait until these guys start their conversation. I believe that's where our uh, opportunity rests. As they start their conversation. They're both looking at each other. Yeah, so Hector, let's go. Get behind this blind spot here. Wonderful. Want to get... Bianca planted back over here because again it is a blind spot so we want to get Bianca planted over there now this is where things might be a little unpredictable we're going to whistle and he will go this way alright cool so we have to pull up this way this is why it's important to eliminate this guy first there we go Bianca down again now, if he comes up this way, you just hide over here on this side instead. And there is a blind spot because of this. You just have to time yourself nicely. Now, we wait for his friend to come here. He will notice that he's gone missing. But all we do is we distract him with a little whistle. Hello. Hello, buddy. All right, he's a little bit closer now. There we go. This has to come up this way as well. Excellent. So we're going to tuck away behind here. He's going to spot the body. Right. Of course he is. My bad. Go ahead and whistle. Pull back. No one's immune from these kinds of uh, oversights. <laughs> I've played so many levels with so many uh, alternative solutions. All right. Down he goes. There we go. Nice and easy. Now we're going to go up over here. Pick the Anka back up. Now, buddy's coming up. You can toss that body into the well over here, but we're a little late on that. No big deal. Uh, what we'll do instead is put Bianca down over here and pop the whistle over here. Now, he will be drawn up this way instead because the whistle was more from this side than the other. And because of the blind spots and the angles, down he goes. I was mixing up uh, two alternative versions, so uh, there you go. That's how you take care of that. And you can very easily accomplish that without being spotted. Go ahead and quick save that again. Uh, and now we have to take care of this hot mess. So we got this gunman over here. Watching over this area like a hawk. Got Buddy over here. Watching over this area. Seems irrelevant. Um, but this guy is watching over him as well. And they're watching over each other. And they're all kind of able to look down over there. To eliminate this guy without using bushes or anything. You have to eliminate this guy. So let's eliminate this guy first. This guy looks up there as well. 
So you have to make sure we pull this guy away. Now, how do we pull this guy away? All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get Hector coming down this way. Nice and slow. We don't need to run. Uh, stay calm over here. And again, I'm keeping an eye... <laughs> uh, again, I'm keeping an eye on this guy's vision cone because we want to make sure that uh, we stay out, we draw this guy out of it. So let's go ahead and pull up over here. And we want to stay up above the well. Stay above the well over here. Over we go. And this is a nice comfy spot for us. So let's go ahead and make sure, again, we're outside of this guy's vision cone, crouching and standing. We're outside of this guy's vision cone. We're going to go ahead and put Bianca down. Make sure we're within whistle range. So yes, put Bianca down. Pull a little bit back. Pop the whistle. Oh, no. Just a little too far away. Wait another second here. There we go. Stay away from the bushes. And this will go through without a problem. Oh, down he goes. Excellent. Pick Bianca back up. Let the body drop. Let the body hit the floor, as it were. And let's do another quick save over here. Now, here is where, again, things get a little unpredictable. Uh, we're trying to draw this guy out. So what I like to do over here is I like to set Bianca down over here. And I like to pull the whistle over here. And then we move up and we get behind this. Now, here's where you have to pay attention to this guy's vision angles, viewing cone, whatever you want to call it, because he might spot you if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So you wait for him, and this is actually going to go out perfectly. Beautiful. That's the smoothest it's ever worked out for me. Sometimes they'll move around a little bit, and you have to circle around the, uh, the little cart over here. But that was super smooth. Whistle right on top of where Bianca is to draw people right to her. Now, over here, we can really ignore this guy, if I'm not mistaken. He doesn't really look our way at all. Uh, so we're able to roll in, and here's what we're going to do. So Cooper, do I even need to use you here? I know. Mean, let's go for it. Let's give him some action, right? Let's get Cooper over here. We're safe to go up the ladder. Again, just steer clear of... Largest building in town. This place reminds me of the one in Deadwood. There's lots of whorehouses in Deadwood. You know, the one where they kicked me out. That doesn't narrow it. <laughs> Again, I love their banter. Um, so yeah, we want to climb the ladder over here. Again, we took care of all the guards, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, but we want to go ahead and hop on over here. They're not able to see outside the windows or anything like that. So we hop on over here. And then we hop on up over here. And now we wait for these guys to get into a conversation. Let's give it a second over here. We can speed time up again, holding down X if necessary. If we're that impatient. But you want to, you want to make sure you wait until the conversation actually begins. Because otherwise he'll spot you. So he turns around. In we go, hold control, pick up the laudanum. Oh, here's a bottle of laudanum. Take too much of that, it's as good as poison. Let's hold on to that. If you say so. And problem solved. Picked it up, got back out. Okay. Let's keep moving. And let's quick save again, just to play it safe. And again, we took care of the guard that was guarding this door. Oh, might be a missed opportunity here. Ah, that's too bad. So this guy is drinking on the job. He likes to turn around every so often and have some whiskey. You want to get into this room through this door and you want to kill him as he has his back turned. You do not want to throw your knife at him because there is a guard that patrols over here and if you throw your knife at this guy, that guard will hear it. So you cannot use a throwing knife. You have to get in and stab him in the back. Uh, so we're going to wait. We're going to hold down X. We're going to wait. Let this man decide he wants to get drinking again. Beautiful, nice and easy. And we can take it slow. Down he goes. You want to pick up the body, and you want to put it in the closet over here. Because the civilian does enter here, you do not want this body discovered. Control click on the barrel. I don't know, amigo. You kill a man, you look him in the eye. Like when you use that giant bear trap of yours? Hey, leave Bianca out of this. Well... Wow, <laughs> the timing on that, because the civilian comes through and picks up the whiskey. So here's the thing. You want to time this, because she's going to deliver that to Wild Marge, and as she delivers that to Wild Marge, you want to be in the position to eliminate the Duke using the Bell and McBain. I'll show you how we do that. Um, and that's how you get those three kills at the same time, because you have a bit of a time delay over here. You see she gets stuck in this conversation, and then she comes up over here. So you do have a fair bit of time to synchronize your actions. Uh, but again, we're not really going for that because explanations and commentary will slow me down and there's no way I can pull it off. Uh, not while doing a commentary. Um, so let's go ahead and 
You can tell in my voice probably that I'm hell-bent on pulling it off eventually. <laughs> uh, and I will do. So let's go ahead and tuck away over here. A little quick save. Now, there is this set of vines over here that you can use to get Cooper back over here. But that's not how we're going to tackle this situation. That's not how we're going to tackle that situation. That's Wild March taken care of. Go ahead and quick save that. And let's get a move on over here. So next up, who do we take care of? Who do we take care of next? Well, let's maybe we try and do a bit of a synchronized kill. Because we can do a partial synchronized kill. If we take a look at our objectives, the Duke and McBain are all that's left. Take a look at our badges. Uh, I don't know which ones it's uh, checked off, but you know what? Because it's all it keeps the old check ones checked already, which is unfortunate. I understand why they do that, but it doesn't help me for my, uh, my, my purposes. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We want to try and get Duke killed. What was that conversation? We can try and listen in on this one. I don't think we can get close enough for it. Pretty sure you have to be in here. But there is a badge that makes that one, I think, impossible to get. Which is, don't kill or knock out anyone in the train track area. Which is this area over here. Which you, of course, have to get into uh, to eliminate McBain. But there's this guard over here. There's this guy going back and forth uh, between these two spots. There's this guy over here. This guy watching over this entire area. You got this guy here. You got this guy here. There's so much over here. Um, but I've got a fun solution for it. It's the thing that I'm most excited to share, I think. So here's what we're going to do. We have to be quick here, though. We have to be quick here. I want to figure out exactly what system works. Uh, all right. So first of all, we're going to quick save twice because I'm that paranoid. We're going to get up over here. These guys are having a conversation. Let them have it. Going to move Cooper over here. It wasn't me. Shut your face, Josh. We're here to return his crushed remains to the earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and all that stuff. Guys, that's all I can remember. Any of you suckers want to say anything? <laughs> Church and the God for saying yeah, I got, I got like something. <clears throat> Bill, uh, uh sir, Bill was a good I, man. I, Never heard a fly. Beat his wife like tomorrow, but who doesn't? You, uh, you rest in peace, then, Bill. Yeah, I'll miss Bill. He was capable. Yes, he was. But nobody put up a wall as fast and as straight as Billy did. Especially not Josh, as we're all aware of now. I said it wasn't me. And I said shut the fuck up. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. There's conversation number 10 that we have to listen in on. Now, people keep ribbing on Josh over here. You'll remember there is another um, badge, which is to bury Josh. So we'll get in on that as well. Now, uh, unfortunately, that conversation started when I was paying attention elsewhere, but, or rather that conversation started when I was trying to explain something else, so we'll have to wait another cycle before I can uh, show you what I was getting at. So, here's what we need to do. This guy over here, uh, no, sorry, this guy over here goes back and forth, having a conversation with his buddy up here, and down to digging over here. So, there's an opportunity presented to us over here, and I'm super pumped to share this, because I think it's absolutely... It's ridiculous. It's, it's what makes this game shine, didn't occur to me. This is what didn't occur to me until just earlier, moments ago, I would say. So keep an eye on this guy here. Look at his viewing cone. There's a blind spot over here, all right? That blind spot is very important to us. And he comes. There we go. Blind spot stays blind. Gonna have this conversation. Let that conversation happen. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and get over to here. Set Bianca down. Suspicious behavior, but no one's here to see us. And let's go ahead and... Uh, you know what? We can't actually whistle. So you know what? Let's do this the simpler way. Pick Bianca back up. Stab and pick him up. Because this is a blind spot. Rush on over to this corner. Drop the body. Alright. Stand up. Now this is where things get a little more dicey. 
where things get a little more dicey. His friend's coming back up over here. These guys are all the way down there, but they're going to turn around and come up soon. His friend is going to notice he's missing. We have to be very careful over here. Quick save. These guys coming back up yet? No. But, but they're about to. Alright. So let them come back up. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. This is where the unpredictability becomes a bit of a problem. Ah, there we go. Alright, so we cannot wait. So we cannot wait. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to rush him. So we're going to stab him and pick him up. We're going to toss the body onto Cooper. We're going to pick Cooper up. We're going to toss him. Pick this body up. we got to toss it up there. Hide that one away. Pick Cooper back up. We're going to toss him up over here. Keep our eyes on Cooper. And make sure that he stays crouched. So, you can toss bodies onto other people to knock them out. You can pick up knocked out people and you can toss them. Only as Hector. Hector's the tossing guy. So we were able to toss Cooper up over here by using these bodies to knock him out, pick him up with Hector, and throw him up over here, which is essential for what we need to do next. Let's go ahead and move over here. Wait until Buddy here looks away and rush the corner. Move up. Nice and easy. Stay low. This is Josh over here. He's looking the wrong way. We can go ahead and drop him real quick. We have to bury him. Let's keep that in mind as well, right? But before we do that, let's pick his body up. Toss it up over here so it doesn't get spotted easily or anything. Climb up top. I like to take the overly cautious route. And we're going to just move up to this edge over here. Another quick save. As you can see how uh, things can be unpredictable. I've never had a body get spotted over there. Uh, so if I just moved quicker, we'd be fine. This is where the quick save, this is why the game even says it's all about quick saving and quick loading. Because you try something new, you make a mistake, or things happen a little differently, and you adapt, you overcome. That's kind of the intent over here. Anyway, so the Duke is heading over, and here's what we need to do. Let's go ahead and get Hector over here. Showdown mode. Alright, we gotta wait for McBain to come over here as well. Speed time up a little bit. If we're lucky, we can synchronize this. Ah, it's too bad. It's okay, we'll wait another cycle. We're in a safe spot over here. Get you set up. We should be able to synchronize this. Oh, I might be a couple of cycles. I might, uh... I might not wait to synchronize these, because I don't want to just have to wait for these guys to line up. But it's a, it's a matter of patience for these guys line up. So let's go ahead and cancel these. We'll do it ourselves. We'll do it asynced. Why not? So, Cooper, you're up first. Go ahead and... Well, now we gotta wait. <laughs> now we gotta wait again. It's okay, no big deal. Speed time up a little bit. Thank the Lord for the fast forward button. Just holding down X. And you know what? We might actually end up synchronized. Oh, that would be lovely. I'd love to have it synchronized. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, nah, he's getting away. Alright, well it is what it is. Fair enough. So, Hector, seems you're up first. Like this. Sure thing, amigo. Not your lucky day, is it? That makes three. How come you pick a fight with every big shot asshole in town? Maybe I can't stand the big shot assholes. All right, go ahead and quick save that. So, that counts as an accident, so people don't care. Well, they care. They'll go around for a little bit, but they'll resume back to normal afterwards. But that's why I pushed Josh up over here, because as these guys go around trying to figure out what happened, they might come over here. And I want to make sure the body doesn't get spotted if that happens. But we're good over there. Yeah, not your problem. Excellent. 
And what we can do now is we can pick Josh back up. We can toss his body down. Head down ourselves. Do another quick save because I'm, you know, nervous like that. <laughs> Go ahead down over here, pick the body up. Again, we want to be careful not to touch any bushes. The buddy over here is looking the wrong way, as it were. These guys are all looking the wrong way. So we can move up. Let's go. A little too loud there. Let's reload that. Pick the body up. Let's go. Now let's go ahead and toss the body over instead. Get that right angle over here. There we go. All clear. Stay low. Move past. Excellent. Now I want to go in, and again, you can see we can get the axe work done here without anybody noticing. So, let's dive on in. He's looking the wrong way. Nice and easy. And... Nice and easy. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and pick Josh right back up. Again, stay low. Control click on the coffin over here. Josh has been buried. Beautiful. So now, here's what we want to do. We want to get out the same way we came in. Let's go ahead and quick save again. Why take that risk otherwise? Wait until Buddy's looking away, and then rush out. There we go. No rush, he says. Absolutely, there's a rush. Alright, next up. Let's just do a quick overview. We've accomplished... Don't... Well, no, we haven't. Um, Buried Josh, listening on 10 private conversations. Three mission targets, obviously, we could have done. Uh, well, if I wasn't doing commentary. But uh, make the deaths of four targets look like accidents. We're about to do. Don't kill or knock out anyone in the train track area. We're about to accomplish. Because... Here... We can do that. Shift's over, McBain. That's it. All done. Satisfied now? You'll be able to sleep at night? I'm fine, Cooper. Let's head back to the saloon. Our drinks are still waiting. Shit, what happened? Done. So Cooper unties the poorly put up wall and just jumps off the side over here. You can give him a, a command to jump off over here as you saw me do. And we're in the clear. And so that has allowed us to uh, not kill or knock anybody out in the train track area and accomplish the task over here. And this was an accident. The bell was an accident. The uh, whiskey was an accident. And then we've got the bull over here, an accident as well. So that's all four deaths of the targets looking like accidents. Now all we got to do is make our way out without touching any bushes or haystacks. So let's go ahead and quick save again. And we should be in the clear. Just got to make our way down to here. I'd love to have accomplished that. I think we all saw me do it. I'd be shocked if I didn't accomplish it somehow. Didn't even hide bodies this time around, so it should be right. Oh yeah, McCoy's here, by the way. You might have noticed earlier as well. Just chilling, checking out the wares. Anyway, that's the level. Gentlemen, I saved your whiskey for you. Gracias, senorita. Uh, don't worry about those men anymore. We took care of them. Oh, that's kind of you, Hector. We sure could use a little more quiet around here. Well, fellas, I have to step out. Would you mind keeping an eye on the place? Leave it to us. Help yourselves. I'll be back in a few. So, how long have you been here? A couple of days. Why are you asking? Did you find him? You know where he is? You have to bring this up now? What the hell, Hector? Just saying, we just had a good time, so why ruin it, huh? Look, I'm not here to play the Good Samaritan. We both know he's working for DeVitt, so just tell me where he is. Easy, amigo. Last I heard, he's at the mayor's house. It's just a short ride up the mountain. No reason to waste any more time, then. You sure this is a good idea? It's getting late. I put this off long enough. What difference is one more day? Where I know Frank, he'll still be there tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow, then. That's right, amigo. Now, tell me what you've been up to.
There it is. There it is. So we've got everything. Oh yeah, don't touch any bushes. Beautiful. So I think you actually have to make sure not to hide bodies in bushes or haystacks either. Because that's the only difference I can think of between the playthrough you just watched now and the one I did previously where I discovered the uh, tossing Cooper trick that I showed you at the end there. Honestly, when I discovered that, I was like, oh, I cannot wait to get this episode out. Um, because it's just so different from anything the game suggests you should be able to do. I came upon it entirely by accident. I discovered separately you can pick up knocked out bodies and that you can, well, I, I knew that, that's basic, but that you can knock people out by throwing bodies on top of them. And I put two and two together and I was like, wait a second, here's how we can accomplish the don't kill or knock out anyone in the train track area. God, it's, this game is just, I, man, <laughs> it's been so much fun playing around with this stuff. So I hope you saw something a little special in today's playthrough. I hope you saw something maybe you didn't think about yourself. Maybe you have your own solutions to some of these things. Again, if you do, uh, you know, it, once the game releases and you're playing it, let me know in the comments because I'm excited to hear what other people have to say. Uh, but yeah, we made all the deaths look like accidents. We accomplished this as I touched on already. We accomplished this as well. Didn't hide any bodies in bushes or haystacks either, which is, I think, a key part of it. We buried Josh at the end there. Listen in on the 10 private conversations. Uh, and then, of course, we were playing on Desperado difficulty. The three mission targets at the same time. Again, I think you can synchronize Wild Marge uh, as well as the Church Bell and the, uh, the building facade falling on uh, McBain. So that's my thought, but you can use these techniques and the time delays between them to try and get those three mission targets killed at the same time. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the replay over here. Always a joy to see and just revisit all of our moves over here. So again, this area was pretty easy, I think, and then we kind of stayed here for a bit and went around with Cooper having a bunch of those conversations. And it's so funny to see it play out so slowly and so methodically. Like, I've never played this level like this, but I thought it'd be the best way to structure our recorded playthrough. But y'all let me know. Feedback is always welcome, so y'all let me know. And there is us moving in to take care of the bull. Uh, so far, we have saved eight times and loaded only once, so that's not uh, not too shabby. We only had a handful of loads, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. And most of those were because of uh, uh, oversights on my part, as opposed to massive mistakes. Like that one over there, where we uh, got spotted. This has gone pretty smoothly over here as well. We go up and pick up the laudanum with Cooper, come back down, kill this guy, taint the whiskey, head back out that way. Then we head on over, listen, try to listen on this conversation, but we can't. Wait a little too long over here, I think. And ultimately kill that guy. Oh, do the body tossing. Oh, it gets so busy up there. <laughs> Hard to single things out unless we slow things down a little bit. But there's the bell coming down. Pick up Josh, bring him over here, bury him. Cooper gets the job done over here, hops back out home free. It took us 38 minutes to accomplish that, but I think you can do it a lot faster. You do not need to listen to all the conversations unless you want the badge. Uh, you do not need to, you know, take your time and wait for some of the cycles like I did where I got interrupted by conversations and stuff. So you can probably pull this mission off easily while accomplishing, you know, almost all of the badges in about 20 to 25 minutes or so. Uh, the speed run is obviously a lot tougher to do, but that's why it's an, it's a badge. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our stat. Well, I do want to save the replay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the stats real quick. 14 and 11 kills. A uh, very even bit of time spent between everybody. And you can see, okay, the reality is it took us 41 minutes, uh, including all the saves and reloads. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, the overall stats. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, playthrough, let's play, showcase of this level, whatever you want to call it. Again, folks, if you did enjoy it, let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Uh... If, if tossing Cooper up to that uh, construction site blew your mind, let me know. Because it blew mine, and I, I, <laughs> I was so excited to share it. Anyway, folks, the next level is also super wild. I have a really cool solution for it, which I think you'll be, you'll be very interested in, because uh, it's, it's where I noticed how big of a deal this game's open-endedness is. So I'm super pumped to share the next level as well. I'll probably do that same time tomorrow. Uh, but hey, again, your likes and comments, let me know if you want to see more Desperados 3 on the channel, so make sure you keep letting me know. Folks, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who support this channel on a monthly basis. You keep this channel alive and running smoothly, and of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.